In developing and maintaining forests for sustainable societies, it's essential that the private sector is brought in alongside the research community. To look at how we can scale up the exchange between forest science and business, I'm delighted now to be joined by UBC's Dean of Forestry, Rob Kozak, and ITTO Projects Manager, Tetra Yanuariadi. Well, first of all, thank you both so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, so thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for inviting. Why is the exchange between science and business so important, achieving sustainable development goals? Achieving sustainable development goals is a grand challenge, a wicked problem, and we just all need to be pulling in the same direction and working together on these, on these big sort of challenges together. And, and I would say that the, the goals of, of business and, and, and uh, scientific organizations are slightly different. The uh, businesses are leaving, I think, an indelible mark on our landscapes, our natural landscapes, and, and um, need to be a, a big part of the solution as well in terms of uh, the interventions that they can, yes. they can provide to addressing sustainable development goals. Um, and uh, academia, uh, scientific organizations can be a big part of trying to understand what those pathways and processes are. Well, let's pick up on that point. I mean, what are some of the challenges that businesses face that scientists can help with? For instance, that uh, the business sector need uh, innovations, creativations uh, to put uh, the situation profitable to them, and that can be helped by the scientists. And then, in the other way around, the scientists need uh, support from the business sector to continue their works, like for instance, uh, supporting the financial supports, also for broadening the network of the scientists. So, so Rob, it seems to me like that uh, both sides can win with that. The scientists can, can help, the business can help with funding with the, the science. So how well, in your experience, do both those groups communicate? Well, um, they, it, it's okay, but there's, there's room for improvement, obviously. Um, the first sort of piece of that is that there's um, very real organizational, organizational and cultural differences between, let's say, a scientific organization and, and industry. The industry tends to be sort of short-term, market-driven, where academics tend to be more meandering and, you know, thoughtful in their approach. But, and that's just the beginning of the differences. And I think the way around that is to um, form and create these entrenched long-term collaborations built on trust and mutual respect and, 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 and go from there. So how do we scale this up, this exchange? We engage business sector across the stakeholders. So we provide a platform for communication between the business sector and the scientists there. So to scale up, I think uh, we need uh, to in intensify effort from the international organization like IUFRO doing this kind of uh, World Congress is a good uh, arena for meeting the, the needs from both sides, business and uh, uh, science. And also I think uh, in terms of the project, like we are based on the project intervention on the ground. So we need more support from uh, donors, countries and international community to put them together, all the stakeholders. And one of the points you just made about projects, about specific projects, how important are some of the bigger projects for doing this? Yeah, I mean, they're incredibly important, especially to the communities that are impacted. And, and, and we need to work hard to uh, co-create uh, knowledge with those communities and co-create research questions and methodologies and do so in a respectful way that allows us to work with mutual respect with, with those communities and not to extract information necessarily. But it, it requires a whole new way of thinking around decolonization, especially with indigenous communities and, and uh, exploring new epistemologies and, and research interventions and so forth. So it's a, it's a paradigm shift. So my final question is about those communities. And you're saying it's really important that both sides, business and, and scientists, work closely with the, the communities most affected. How confident are you? You call it a paradigm shift. How confident do you will see this paradigm shift? We're seeing it. I mean, we are changing the way that we are approaching working with communities. Um, and it's becoming less about extracting information and working with communities to co-create solutions. The impacts that industry is having is on communities and the solutions are reside within those communities. And, and we're working with them to, to figure out paths forward. Are you confident? Oh, very confident because we are working with the community for the almost 40 years and then we help them and they also help us you know, to really make clear the real problem on the ground. So with that, I think we are targeting the uh, project objective and also intervention in the right way. Well, thank you both so much indeed for joining us and I uh, hope everything goes well for you this week. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. So much. Thank you.